All right, this is John Cola with OKRaw.com. <laughs> Today we have another exciting episode for you. I'm here in Hollywood, California with Robbie Babaro. I've known him, Robbie for so long. I don't think I've even had a video with him before. But for those of you guys that are either have diabetes or are concerned about getting diabetes, maybe you're on insulin, you know, this is the episode you will want to pay attention to because in my opinion, Robbie is the expert because this, this is what he lives each and every day with yeah. how, his, how his type one diabetes that he's lived with since he was a child yeah. and has significantly reduced his insulin um, and has saved a lot of money because of the reduced insulin, but also more importantly turned his health around to be as healthy as possible. So in this video, we're gonna show you guys ways to potentially reduce your insulin dependency, maybe even get rid of it depending on the type of diabetes you have, as well as eat the healthiest foods on the planet so you guys can have the most optimal health because diabetes is only one kind of sickness or illness, in my opinion, brought upon in most cases, but not all, by your choices in life and the foods you guys are eating. So it is without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this interview with Robbie. So Robbie, the first question is, let's talk about diabetes and your experience yeah. with diabetes and how you got type one diabetes in the first place. Absolutely, so I've been living with type one diabetes for 19 years now. I was diagnosed in January of 2000. So my older brother actually had diabetes. Oh, wow. So he still has diabetes. And I was complaining for a few weeks to my mom. I said, mom, I think uh, I have diabetes just like Steve. I'm thirsty all the time and I'm going to the bathroom all the time. She's like, no, don't be silly. You don't have diabetes. So eventually she leaves town. It's just me and my brother at the house. She calls to check in and say, hey, how are things going? What's happening at home? I said, mom, I couldn't sleep last night. I was cramping all night. She said, okay, go upstairs, use your brother's blood glucose meter and test yourself. So I tested myself. I was well over 400. Wow. My blood goes to supposed to be somewhere between 80 and 130. And my brother said right then and there, you have type one diabetes, pack your bag, you're gonna be in the hospital for a while. So we went to the doctor, got the official diagnosis. I only had to stay in the hospital one night because my family was very familiar with how to treat and, and manage type one diabetes. I remember my dad saying, look, it's just an inconvenience. Don't worry about it. You can still reach all your dreams in life. So I was always on top of type one diabetes. But like you said, I had the other side effects, other problems associated with just following a standard American diet. So as a child, I had um, chronic acne, which was no fun. I got sick all the time. I was taking Claritin D all, all year and still getting sick. And I also had plantar fasciitis. I had warts on my feet, just wow. typical health problems that went away when I changed my lifestyle. So. The biggest thing that happened for me is I tried different diets living with type 1 diabetes. I tried a Weston A. Price style diet where I was eating grass-fed beef and raw milk and stuff like that. Then I eventually tried a Gabriel Cousins diet where it was basically a plant-based ketogenic diet. And the biggest thing that I noticed in my journey was that when I was following a plant-based ketogenic diet, my carbohydrate to insulin ratio was three to one. So you calculate that by taking the total grams of carbohydrate you eat divided by the total insulin you use in a 24 hour period. So I was eating about, eating about 30 grams of carbohydrate, taking about 10 units of insulin a day, that's three to one. When I changed to a low fat plant-based whole food diet, eating predominantly fruits and greens and non-starchy vegetables, I now eat 750 grams of carbohydrate per day and take about 34 units of insulin. So that's a 22 to one ratio. And the big point here is that when you're living with insulin dependent diabetes, so type one diabetes is a form of diabetes where my pancreas has been damaged. We don't know how or why it was damaged, but it has been, and I don't produce enough endogenous insulin. So I have to inject it. That's insulin dependent diabetes. There's also type 1.5 diabetes that's insulin dependent, and you could be a type two insulin dependent if your pancreas has been exhausted. So the goal when somebody's living with insulin dependent diabetes is to use the same amount of insulin your body would have normally physiologically secreted when you didn't have a damaged pancreas. That's the goal. And the average insulin use is about 30 to 50 units. That's typical. That's what you'll see in the journal articles. But the, again, the big difference is I'm using a physiological normal amount, you know, roughly 34 units a day, while eating five times, six times, 10 times the amount of carbohydrate that everybody else is eating that they got those averages on. So I'm showing a great level of insulin sensitivity. 
And this happened when I was a freshman in college at the University of Florida. And I realized at that point, this is over 12 years ago, December 2006 is when I transitioned to a low-fat plant-based whole food diet. And I realized that what I experienced in my own body was the solution to diabetes, no matter what form somebody had. But also for people living with pre-diabetes and type 2 diabetes, if they could do what I did, they completely get rid of the condition. It's gone. You've reversed the core issue, you reversed the cause of those conditions when you become insulin sensitive. So now uh, my co-founder and I, Cyrus Gambata, we have a coaching practice called Mastering Diabetes and we teach people how to become insulin sensitive, how to reverse pre-diabetes, how to reverse type 2 diabetes if they're still producing enough of their own insulin. And if you're living with type 1.5 and type 1 diabetes, we teach people how to take control of their life, how to maximize their blood glucose control, how to reduce their chances of complications. So people need to realize that type diabetics, do, people living with diabetes do not die of high blood glucose readings. That's not, that's not what they die of. They die of the complications of diabetes, primarily heart disease. So heart disease, kidney disease, fatty liver disease, all these conditions are caused, are, are connected to insulin resistance. If you're insulin resistant, you increase your chances of these conditions. So that is why insulin sensitivity is so important. And that's just what I've experienced in my own life. Like you said, I'm passionate about teaching this to other people and showing people what dietary approach, what foods lead to maximum insulin sensitivity. Awesome. <clears throat> so uh, what are some challenges, Robbie, with like if somebody takes too much insulin or eating the wrong foods, like is, is eating or taking too much insulin uh, an in, in inherent problem? And okay. what kind of situation it's gonna yeah. cause? Because, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so it's a great question. So people, you know, you hear about insulin being a fat storage hormone. It's like, oh, insulin's a problem. It's like, no, 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 no. Insulin is not the problem. Insulin is a necessary required hormone. You just want to be using a normal amount, a normal physiological amount. The problem is, is why did you need the more excess insulin in the first place? That's the problem. And the problem is the insulin resistance. And the primary cause of insulin resistance, the primary reason why somebody would need to inject excess insulin or have their body be producing excess insulin is eating too much fat. Fat blocks insulin from working properly. So essentially, you eat too much fat, it accumulates in cells that are not designed to store fat. So fat is supposed to be an adipose tissue, that's where it belongs, and you have very small amounts in muscle and liver tissue. When you eat a diet high in fat, you get excess fat stored in muscle and liver cells, and that inhibits insulin's ability to function properly. So insulin's primary function is to take glucose out of your bloodstream into your cells. When there's too much fat inside, that process of insulin opening the door and allowing glucose to usher itself in is inhibited. It's truly that simple and it's been demonstrated over and over and over again in the peer-reviewed literature dating back to 1926. That's when Dr. Sansom first experimented with what he called a radical experiment of adding carbohydrate-rich foods to people's diets. So insulin was discovered in 1922 and that's when they could start trying new approaches to diabetes. Prior to that, it was really just a lost cause. It was pretty much a death sentence. They didn't know how to help people with diabetes. They would try a very, very low carbohydrate diet that could keep people alive for a little bit longer, but their quality of life was terrible. So Dr. Sansom in 1926 starts realizing, as I add carbohydrates to people's diet, they don't need more insulin. So I'm giving them more carbohydrate, the insulin they were using while on the low carb diet is about the same. And this is about a 41% of calories coming from fat diet. And that was the beginning. 1927, Dr. Sweeney starts feeding healthy, young medical students, men. He 23 people, he fed them a diet where they were eating nothing but, uh, they were just doing water, a basic starvation diet. Then he fed, this is for, for two days, okay? Then he also fed them a high protein diet, which was basically egg whites and uh, lean meat. Then he fed them a, um, a high fat diet, which was, had like cream and butter and stuff like that. And then he fed them a processed high carbohydrate diet. So this is candy, pastries, bread, very processed. And what he saw in 1927, he did, every, everybody did those two diets for two, those four diets for two days. And then in an oral glucose tolerance test, the high carbohydrate people tested as non-diabetic. Even though they're eating Even candy. Even though they're eating candy. Milk. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> the high fat diet tested as diabetic. So this is 1927. Then in the 1930s, you have a physician, Dr. Rabinowich, starts practicing a low-fat diet with his patients. And he finds, 
he published three studies between 1930 and 1935. And the study in 1932, he reviewed his results with 500 patients. And he had a 97% success rate. 16 people he didn't see great results with, and he reported that 13 of them didn't follow the diet, and three of them couldn't get better on either low carb or low fat. They were just a problem patients. But 97% 90, success rate feeding people carbohydrate rich foods. Then in the 1930s, Dr. Hemsworth did a fascinating study where he fed patients seven different diets that were changing in their proportion of calories from fat. So from 80% to 13%. And he did insulin sensitivity tests and showed that as the fat decreased, they became more insulin sensitive. Wow. Insulin worked quicker and it drove the blood glucose down further as the fat decreased. So if you, when you, if you could, I could give you the slides or something, you <laughs> insert it in the video, but the, there's a dramatic difference between 80% and 13% calories from fat. And this continued. Then in the 1930s, 1939, Dr. Walter Kempner starts feeding, he starts trying to treat people with kidney disease. They didn't have a solution at that time. And he comes up with, a, again, a radical diet here. This is ra white rice, white sugar, fruit and fruit juice. That's what he starts feeding people. And he saw reversal of heart disease, kidney disease, psoriasis, a long list of conditions that he saw reversal of. And even he was skeptical what would happen if I tried this with people with diabetes. He wasn't sure. So he goes ahead and tries it. And in 1958, he publishes a study showing his results on 100 consecutive patients no cherry picking, and he showed that there was an improvement. These people were eating 95% of calories from carbohydrate. 2% of calories were coming from fat, okay? And he saw an improvement in their blood glucose, their insulin levels decreased, and some people completely got off their medication. So this is in the 19, the 19 uh, he published that in 1958. And then we, then I can go on and on, we can do a whole video of this. We got Nathan Pritikin in sub publishing, in the, but a key study here in 1979, Dr. James W. Anderson at Kentucky University publishes a study where he fed people a weight-maintaining high-carbohydrate diet. So they were not losing weight, because you see a lot of people in the confusion yeah, of you know, what's the best diet to do for diabetes, how do you see improvements? Everybody says, look, if they lose weight, that's why they became more insulin-sensitive. We say that about the low-carb diet, they say that about our diet. But the, the research that James W. Anderson did showed that you could reverse type 2 diabetes. You can get off all medications, in less than in two weeks by not losing any weight. High oh. carbohydrate diet, no weight loss, over 50% of people in less than two weeks got off all their medication. No more insulin, healthy blood glucose. So we'll see that over and over again. There's other researchers, but the one thing is, again, there's a lot of, conf and I just want to restate here. The research shows over and over and over again, high carbohydrate, low fat diet improves insulin sensitivity. There is no debate about, there's no question about what is the cause of prediabetes and type 2 diabetes. We all know it's insulin resistance. So if you look at the research and you find an approach that can reverse insulin resistance, then you know you can solve that. And, and that's what's out there right now. And we just want more people to hear this. Wow, man, that's why I'm doing the video with you today. So is fat the enemy, right? Fat's in everything. You pick up a bag of potato chips or processed foods or everything has oil as like the first or second yeah. ingredient, even animal products, you know, and dairy. I mean, it's, it's fat in there and all these things. So like people just need to stop eating these foods, Robbie, to like really get better. Is that what needs to happen? It's so simple. So there, like you said, there's fat in everything you eat. There's fat in bananas. <laughs> there's fat in lettuce. So people get concerned about how do I get enough fat? And the bottom line is when you eat a low fat plant-based whole food diet, just enough calories of whole plant foods, you will automatically get enough fat. It's very, very difficult to not. You have to try very hard to not get enough fat. Very hard. So we have devised a very simple eating pattern, okay? Eat a system, traffic light system, green light, yellow light, and red light foods. So in the green light category, these are foods that you can eat an unlimited amount of, and you can reverse insulin resistance. You can reach your ideal weight, whether you need to gain weight or lose weight. Most people need to lose weight. You can eat unlimited quantities of green light foods. These are fruits. These are starchy vegetables. These are legumes. These are intact whole grains. Those are the first four. And I want to pause there for a second. Those are in a specific order. Fruits, starchy vegetables, legumes, intact whole grains. You want to emphasize those first because they are calorie dense yeah. plant foods. 
if somebody switches to a diet, greens are important. I mean, anybody, <laughs> we all know that, okay? It's super, nobody's going to debate about whether those are good for you. The nutri that we all have to, we're going to eat those, of course, that's important. But if you did just that, yeah. if you focus too much on salads and just eat, you get hungry. And then you're, you're like, it's just starving and you go back and eat a cheeseburger or something and you feel better because you finally got some calories. So it's about building some calorie density into your diet by focusing on those categories first. And then, yes, non-starchy vegetables are next, leafy greens, herbs and spices, mushrooms. We don't recommend eating a meal without those. On our program, we suggest you always include those at every single meal, but the base is the calorie dense green light foods and then you do them together and that's going to also help with your blood glucose control especially as you're transitioning for those who are more insulin resistant adding the non-starchy vegetables adding the greens is going to help blunt any blood glucose spike that you might see while you're insulin resistant so that's the green light category the yellow light category is full of very healthy foods many of them completely whole foods but they are either high in fat or a little bit more processed so these are foods we have to be careful about how much you're eating. Just don't go to town and eat as much as you want. The green light category, so much water, so much fiber, it's difficult to eat too much. You genuinely get to eat as much as you want. So the yellow light category, these are foods like nuts and seeds, avocado, coconut meat, olives. Those are all whole plant foods, very nutritious, very, very nutritious. Go ahead and include them. Just don't eat too much, okay? And then there's also some more processed foods like, um, you know, these days you have bean pasta, you have brown rice pasta. That's okay, those are good. It's be still better to eat just beans or eat brown rice, but the pastas are healthy options. Just to be careful about eating too much of those, focus on green light if you can. Um, we also have some fermented foods and stuff like that in the yellow light category. Those, are, those can be good, a lot of studies on that. But again, you don't just eat unlimited amounts of those foods. Now, the red light category, these are foods that we suggest you completely avoid or minimize to the best of your ability. These are all animal products, oils, and just processed garbage that we all know is bad. So <laughs> oils, you know, people get a little confused about that one. The reason we don't recommend eating oils is because it's the most calorie dense food on the planet. If you are trying to lose weight, it's going to inhibit that process. It's also so high in fat, it's just pure fat, <laughs> that yeah. it will um, it'll cause insulin resistance. There's no question about it. So eat whatever the oil was made out of. Eat some flax seeds, eat some olives, eat some coconut meat. Eat, that's great. Just don't eat the most processed food on the planet. We all are, everybody in this community about healthy living is saying don't eat processed food. And then here we are eating people promoting uh, oil, one of the most processed foods on the planet as a health food. It's really not. So oil's out. And just to elaborate on this calorie density point. So uh, Dr. Terry Shintani published a study in the Journal of American Clinical Nutrition. And this was in, I believe his study was 1991. I have to go back and check. But he gave people an ad libitum diet, okay? They, could, they went to his center, and in the morning, he would, they fed them breakfast, they would give them lunch, and they would give them snacks for lunch to go, you know, to go home and eat. And then they'd come back for dinner, eat a dinner that they was fed, and they would have a, a lecture. This had happened for 21 days, okay? And they got to eat as much as they want, of all the green light foods I just listed, as much as they want. They had a little bit of animal products, but that was limited. It was no more than, I think, eight ounces a day, maximum. And on their control diet, so when they first came in, they evaluated what they ate. And they found out that they ate about 2,600 calories, and they ate 3.9 pounds of food per day, okay? <laughs> then, on the ad libitum diet of the Hawaii diet, is what he called it, basically eating green light foods, they got to eat as much food as they want. They did tests to study how satisfied they were. There was moderate to high satiety. And they ate 1,600 calories, again, eating as much as they want, feeling satisfied, and they ate 4.1 pounds of food. They ate more total food and 1,000 less calories. That is calorie density in action. So this diet is almost naturally calorie limiting where you always get to eat as much as you want. And I'm, I mean this in the most sincere way possible. Anybody watching this video, I'm telling you, green light foods, eat as much as you want any time of day and you will reach your ideal weight. It's very, very difficult to eat too much of those foods. You, anytime you don't have to go hungry on this diet, you get to eat as much as you want. And let's say a meal is not satisfying somebody. It's like, oh, I ate the meal and I'm hungry an hour later. Okay, now it's time to adjust the calorie density. 
instead of maybe eating just strawberries, you gotta have some strawberries and some bananas because bananas are way more calorie dense. So we play around with this and we work on this in our coaching program where we coach people on a day-by-day -day basis and walk them through this process. But it's super important that to understand a lot of these, these details as you go through making the transition. Cool. So a question I have for you, Robbie, is how much fat, like, you know, it's a yellow light food so yeah. in terms of like avocados or nuts and seeds, like could somebody eat a half of avocado or a handful of nuts or, you know, what, because yeah. somebody might misinterpret like, yeah. oh, I eat lots of this, but I still, you know, shovel in a couple of handfuls of nuts in a day and it's great. Nut, nuts are, you know, they're quite a health food. I eat nuts, but you know, you could overdo them really quick if you're shoveling in handfuls in my opinion. Yeah. It's a great question. So we teach a maximum of 15% of calories mm -hmm. coming from fat. That's a maximum. And we also teach another way to look at it is have no more than 30 grams of total fat per day. So we suggest using a software like Chronometer. Um, there's also Fit day. And, and yeah. so many out there. Use whatever one you like, whatever you actually will use. That's the key. You have to use it. And we're not suggesting that people become calorie counters or <laughs> it just becomes a tool to raise your awareness, awareness of what you're eating. And once you learn, you don't need to use it anymore. You don't need to think about it. The only reason to use it is if you are a insulin person living with insulin dependent diabetes and you want to know how many grams of carbohydrate you're eating so you know how much insulin to inject. Mm. That would be the primary reason to continue using these softwares. I personally use Chronometer for that very reason. But in general, we are not suggesting that people use this software long term. It's just an awareness tool to, you don't, people don't know how much fat is in that small handful of nuts and seeds. We don't know how much fat is in that whole avocado, even though it might be a small one. So use that in general. You know, we're talking about half an avocado a day. Uh, we're talking about, you know, a couple ounces of nuts a day. So it's, it is a very small amount because people are always surprised to see how much fat is just coming from the whole foods they're eating. So when you put this stuff in, I'm eating about roughly 2,700 to 3,000 calories a day and rarely eating any overt fats, no avocado, nuts and seeds, very rare. And I'm getting somewhere between 15 and 25 grams of fat a day. So you get plenty of fat by just eating whole foods. Cool. So I think a question I have is like, you know, some nuts and seeds or some fats are, you know, they're not all created equal. So like peely nuts are like 90s, I don't know, 6% fat. <laughs> <laughs> so you gotta eat a lot less of them. I've never had those. Oh, you haven't? Oh my no. god, I just came from the trade show. So uh, uh, yeah, peely nuts, hey, dude, they like melt in your mouth. They're uh, so fat. You gotta crazy. keep them in the freezer because they like expire quickly. Uh. So I mean, anyways, all nuts and seeds are not created equal is the point. And you know, you could, you could buy the non-fatty Florida avocados that have a lot less fat than like a Haas. It's nice and buttery, right? Oh, sure. So if you want to eat more avocado, get the you know the the low-fat versions. And you know, in, in general, actually, on my diet, I like to I like to stay between like between ten and twenty five max for a normal person without any kind of diabetes yeah. complications. I like to stay actually more around twenty is like my ideal. You get too much high fat, then you're really displacing other more nutritious foods, in my opinion. The other thing I want to talk to you about, Robbie, and ask um, is about nutrient dense foods. So you know, a white potato yeah. is, a, is, a, is is a vegetable. It, it would probably be on your um, green list, but you know, in my opinion, like a purple potato instead of a, yeah. uh, you know, a white potato would be a lot healthier to eat. And you know, uh, deeply pigmented foods. I've seen lots of research with the antioxidants mm -hmm. and the the pigments and the lutein, the zeaxanthin, all these functional components. Like eating, just making a selection between black beans instead of mm -hmm. buying the white beans or getting the, you know, this rice I learned about has seven times more antioxidants than kale. Mm -hmm. It's called jasberry rice from Thailand instead of eating white rice. I mean. In my opinion, and you t you tell me if yeah. this has been your experience, yeah. if you eat more higher antioxidant foods, it gives your body a, a better ability to potentially heal because now you have all these, you know, <laughs> anti-inflammatory components and antioxidant components and anti-aging components literally in the food. And, and unfortunately, in a lot of plant-based eating, you know, we don't really get into like this level and talk yeah. about like how you just switching out the color of the rice could really make a, in my opinion, significant difference. 100%. Nutrient density matters. And I would agree with everything you just said. In any situation where you can make a decision to buy the food that's more nutrient dense, just as affordable, do it. So to me, it's all about just doing what works for you. We want this to just be a very simple, easy thing for people to do in their life. Don't get overwhelmed. Don't get too worried about it. And for us, it's important that people eat food that they love. 
And we, I'm so adamant about that in our coaching program. I promise people we are gonna work with you over and over and over again until you find foods that you love. You find what we call go-to meals. The recipes, you're just, that's my favorite. I love that food. I love that jasmine rice, <laughs> you know? But the part of the, the key is trying different things. Yeah. That's, you, there are so many different varieties, so many different options that people don't even know about. We have like a, a, a post on our website where we list all the green light foods, like literally every single one. It's like 90 different fruits that are in the USDA nutrient database, all the different grains and all this stuff. And there's obviously even more than just yeah. what's there. Like the jasmine rice one, that's not in the USDA nutrient Jazz database. Jasberry rice. Jasberry. Jasberry <laughs> rice is not in the USDA nutrient database. So it's fun to try those new things and focusing on nutrient density is, is very important. So, but I also just want to make sure people don't get overwhelmed and right. thinking it's that like- It's extra credit, like it's you can it's, do it's, that. It's, but if you also, can't get it, if you can't get the jasberry yeah. rice, white rice is great. And it depends on where you're coming from. Yeah. If you're starting out as a person who's literally you eating McDonald's right now on your way to work, and you start eating for whatever reason, you access white potatoes and you're able to bake white potatoes and you can have those for breakfast. Like, they're cheap at the dollar store. It's, it's, <laughs> that's an improvement. We're yeah. gonna celebrate that. And then as you do this, we're talking about long-term success. Maybe in year two, maybe in year four, maybe in year 10, you start eating these new foods that you're talking about. They become you know, something you're desiring. It doesn't matter. But we gotta always move in the right direction and we gotta focus on adding more and more green light foods. That's the key. I see a lot of people getting lost in nuances and details and weeds while they're still going to veggie grill. Okay, we, we, gotta, we gotta solve the big problems first and then we can worry about these little things. Yeah, so I mean, the other thing to me this means is like, you know, you gotta start becoming your own producer instead of a consumer in our society. I mean, I take that to the extreme and you, know, guys, you guys don't have to do this. Is, you know, I have a full garden in my backyard where I literally have my own farm and I have so much romaine lettuce and lettuces and kales and things I can eat this time of year. Uh, you know, but I want you guys, even if you're not growing your own, I want you guys to process your own food. You don't understand when you guys buy something in a package, you know, the companies are putting in what they need to put in so that it could be remain shelf stable and so that it tastes good, so that you get addicted to it, so that you keep buying it, right? Plus you're creating excess packaging and waste. They're also high in oil and usually sugars and all these things. So, you know, buy your whole food ingredients and, and prepare meals at home. We've lost this tradition in our society. And that's, in my opinion, one of the big reasons for all the health challenges, whether it's diabetes or other things, because we're, we're allowing somebody else to be, a, 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 you know, the uh, producer of what we are consuming. And so, you know, whether you want to make your own, hey, are juices allowed in your program? Fresh juices, yeah. like make your own juice sure. instead of going to the juice bar, sure. you know, make your own veggie burgers, you know, out of beans and yeah. fruits and vegetables and, and all these things in your dehydrator in your <clears throat> oven, instead of buying the pre-made ones that you cannot control, the oil, the sugar, the salt, all that stuff that they're putting in there. Yeah. So we do have a green light, yellow light, red light category for drinks and for mm -hmm. uh, cooking methods. So, but to answer your question quickly here, Juices are allowed, they're, a green light juice would be greens. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so if you're gonna juice celery, that's great. That's gonna have a minimal impact on blood glucose and it's just full of nutrients. Same thing with, you know, you wanna add Swiss chard or whatever, just a green juice in general is great. For people living with diabetes, when you start adding things like fruits or you start juicing, you know, starchy vegetables, now you're adding a lot more glucose, you're taking a lot of the fiber out, it can be troublesome. So we say help people to be careful. We obviously don't put that in the yellow, red light category. That's not, that doesn't belong there. It belongs in the yellow light category. Have it if you want, be careful. As you become more and more insulin sensitive, people living with type two diabetes who've completely reversed it, juices like that aren't gonna be a problem. They're gonna be able to totally handle that. If you're living with insulin dependent diabetes, you just have to be able to dose properly. So if you wanted to have something like orange juice, you really love that, have it with a salad. I've done that before. I've had orange juice with a dinner meal. I'm gonna have it with a salad. I don't see any kind of crazy blood glucose spike. So, you know, I'm living with type one diabetes. I have a continuous glucose monitor. I use a Dexcom G6. So I literally get my blood glucose reported to me every five minutes on my phone. <laughs> so I can see how some of these things impact a meal. And I can tell from personal experience how adding greens and non starchy vegetables to any meal, including a time when you're drinking juice, has a significant impact and we see this in our clients. I mean, we've had over 3,000 people go through our coaching program, so we have a lot of experience with people living with diabetes and a lot of insight on this. Cool, so if, if somebody's out there, uh, Robbie, living with type one diabetes, like uh, average type one person that comes to you and you're coaching, 
like what's their you know insulin needs yeah. before and after your program and how, how is this really benefiting them aside from saving the the money or their insurance on the insulin plus also how is it benefiting literally them and their health their life expectancy yeah. and all this stuff 100 percent. so people living with type 1 diabetes will typically see an insulin reduction of about 40 percent within the first week so if you're weeks. buying the insulin that's 40 percent savings right totally there. yes so that can be a big deal uh, hopefully a lot of people are on insurance and then yeah. they actually <laughs> might not see a big of difference but that's okay whether you're buying it or not it's nice to be using less because again you just want to get to your physiological normal amount that's the goal so most importantly about people see a big spike in their energy they have just back to having more energy they find that their blood glucose control is better they're not on the roller coaster of highs and lows highs and lows they're much more predictable and you know now they're very confident that they are not going to develop the complications of type 1 diabetes heart disease you can become heart attack proof you know when you start seeing your cholesterol drop you start getting down to your ideal weight a lot of people with type 1 diabetes have excess weight and so getting to an ideal weight getting your cholesterol in a healthy range lowering blood pressure getting off blood pressure medications and we have a type 1 testimonial chris hertel from our group he got off i think it was 18 medications he's living with rheumatoid arthritis he's got off that medication so he's just doing amazing so we see transformations of people living with type 1 diabetes on a regular basis so you know people might be using 80 units of insulin drop to 40 might be using 60 drop to 30 i mean it happens on a regular basis cool and then so type 2 let's talk about type 2 because type 2 in my opinion you tell me if this is correct is fully reversible if you're doing a right lifestyle eating properly or maybe if you just go off to true north health center in santa rosa and and water fast for a little bit you could actually walk in with type 2 and walk out yeah. without type 2 yeah. and then you gotta of course maintain the right, right. proper diet uh, you know so that you don't get it back <laughs> okay so the vast majority of people living with type 2 diabetes absolutely can completely reverse it get off all medications have normal blood glucose control and eat you know a low-fat plant-based whole food diet as long as they maintain it the condition doesn't come back there are many people who have had type 2 diabetes for a long time and that means that their pancreas, because they developed insulin resistance, their pancreas had to produce excess insulin, excess insulin, keep on working and working, and it got exhausted. And the beta cells in the pancreas basically die, and they cannot produce insulin anymore. And at that point, people have developed insulin-dependent type 2 diabetes. They have an oh, wow. exhausted pancreas. They are just, we can verify this with a C-peptide test. So a C-peptide is produced in a one-to-one -one ratio with insulin, so you can go and then they break off, see peptide floats in the blood, that's easy to test. And we can use that as an indicator of how much endogenous insulin are you producing. If your C-peptide level is low, we can tell that this person is living with insulin-dependent type 2 diabetes and if they also don't have antibodies. So that's how you kind of know the difference. Somebody living with type 1 or type 1.5 diabetes will have antibodies and a low C-peptide. Wow. And so that is showing that there is something that is damaging your beta cells. Whereas in type two, it's nothing was really damaging it. They just got exhausted. They got overworked and they died when there's no antibodies present. So type two insulin dependent, in that case, again, the goal is to just inject the same amount of insulin that your body would normally produce. So if you're still producing some insulin, then obviously you only need, you want a little bit more. You want to get to that same, you know, total number there. But again, it doesn't matter at that point. Insulin is not the enemy. Insulin is not the problem. We hear this over and over again. You know, insulin, the you know, fast storage hormone, you know, too much insulin leads to all these problems. It's like, no, 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 no. We're just looking for the appropriate amount. So in that case, use a small amount of insulin and you still completely uh, have great control of your diabetes. But again, pre-diabetes. So in America, we have 110 million people living with either pre-diabetes and type 2. Majority of them do not know that they have pre-diabetes and they can completely avoid developing type 2 diabetes and become a non-diabetic which means they're going to get their a1c to 5.6 or below and they can do that with a low-fat plant-based whole food diet it's incredibly easy you just have to do it it's it's super simple Actually, easy is not the right word it's simple to understand but not always easy to do and that's why we have a coaching program that's why we have a community of support because it is important to have that help to get your questions answered and to stick with a community that helps you stick with it long term. Cool. So, I mean, I, I predominantly would say I'm a low fat, whole food, plant based eater, yeah. mostly raw fruits and vegetables. I mean, I drink juices and stuff. But um, for those of you guys that are watching that have never heard of this, 
like uh, I don't want to say like your particular diet or my particular yeah. diet because that's what we yeah. eat after doing this for many years. But on your program, Robbie, like what would be a tr- tr- typical diet that somebody might want to that would somebody would consume on a, on a day to make sure they get their calorie needs or their nutrition needs, but not go yeah. over that yeah you know yeah. The fat percentage. So a typical mastering diabetes diet would look like having fruit for breakfast. We encourage people to have four of their favorite fruits for breakfast and add some ground chia seeds or ground flax as a simple insurance policy. Now how much? About uh, an ounce or two. All right. All right? Or a tablespoon. Yeah, sure. So you do that, that's like just an insurance policy for omega-6 fatty acids. By, three, by three. doing cheap. Omega-3. Yeah, sorry, omega-3, <laughs> sorry, yeah, omega-3s. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. thank you. <laughs> so um, you can ground those up, it's best to ground them. And then you can add some greens or non-starchy vegetables as well for, to breakfast. And then lunch is going to be, for most people on our program, really like to add in a much more calorie-dense, starchier meal. So this could be like a bean soup or something, or it could be some quinoa, stuff like that. Then with added greens, you know, added non-starchy vegetables, things like tomatoes, bell peppers, stuff like that. Then uh, you can have, you know, maybe a snack in the afternoon, some fruit, whatever. And then dinner could be something like potatoes, Mm. or it could be another intact whole grain that somebody prefers, or squash, stuff like that. So another starchy meal most people eat. And then if they want to, they could have a dessert like an ice cream or something like that. And really, so nice cream is basically just like frozen bananas put through like a champion juicer with a blank plate, just kind of fluffs up basically frozen fruits. So it's like a fruit sorbet, yes, 100% absolutely. fruit, nothing added. This is not out of a package, you guys could make yourself. And it tastes incredible. I think people <laughs> are, would be amazed to see how much bananas taste even better than they already taste in the form of nice cream. And have you, Robbie, when I was in, I was in uh, Kauai. There's this, there's this uh, farm actually freezing white sugar pineapples and then making nice cream out of it. Oh it's my out of God. the world. That's it's even better than the that. bananas, man. Oh my God. That's it's so incredible. creamy and like delicious. You gotta I got to travel diet. there just to have that. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good, man. Yeah, because the thing about pineapple is most in America, it's not ripened properly. I know. So if you can have it ripened there, that's huge. And it's white. Yeah, it's, it's quite yeah. good. And it's that's great. Whole, whole fruit dessert. The most amazing thing. I love it. <laughs> yeah, if people want recipes, they can go to masteringdiabetes.org. We have some recipes that are you know, specific for people living with diabetes, optimized and low fat, whole foods. Cool. So, I mean, that diet actually doesn't sound too hard to do. Like, you know, I can't see like people could go out to their health food store and buy some of these ingredients, the yeah. whole foods. It's just like super simple. But I think the main blocking point for people is that people have food addictions to like mm. what they're used to eating. They like eat, eating their um, umami burger right. or their diet cheese or their you know processed vegan foods. Cause even if you're vegan, you could still have yeah, diabetes because totally. you're eating not the right yeah. plant-based diet, of right, course. Right. Um, so w- what are some tips for, to get people away from eating the foods that literally they, they become addicted to or the foods that they become used to because changing them over, overnight could be you know, challenging for some people. It's absolutely challenging. So we actually suggest that people transition slowly. That's not what me and Cyrus did personally. So we can certainly, (laughs) for people who it feels they're ready to do that, then we support it. A chronic situation that you need to change for sure. Totally. Some situations warrant that, but in general, it's preferable to change one meal at a time. And so we change breakfast first in our coaching program. And once somebody feels like they have mastered breakfast, no matter how long it takes, it doesn't matter to us. It could take you a week, it could take you three weeks, it could take you five weeks, whatever. Once you feel like you've mastered breakfast, you found recipes that you love, you eat them consistently, you're able to manage your blood glucose with those meals, then go ahead and move to lunch. Yeah. Same system. Take your time with lunch, find recipes you like, get in the groove, where to buy these things, how to eat out at this meal in, in your neighborhood where you live, figure it out, master lunch, and then move to dinner. And so this is a good way to sort of ease into it and not get overwhelmed. And I think a key part of making this diet taste good and work long term, again, is experimenting with recipes to make sure you love the food. You have to look forward to your meals. I get excited for every single upcoming meal. I just just can't wait, I love it. And I know people can feel the same way. And it just takes experimenting and it takes patience and your taste buds will also adjust. That's a big thing. Right now, people are used to very highly palatable foods. It's really artificial stimulation that's going on here. It's not natural. And you know, Doug Lyle from The Pleasure Trap, he talks about this so eloquently. You know, a simple example is they have, we've taken natural things and made them very unnatural. So for example- Perverted like, them. Yeah, so a, a, for example, a moth is designed to fly towards the stars. Okay, but in, in a world where we have these sort of 
unnatural options, a moth can fly to a light and kill itself. So it's sort of similar, like these, these food scientists have used technology to sort of play on our natural desires to make us crave things that lead to an unhealthy outcome. So when you get away from those foods, then what's naturally palatable and desirable be, tastes good. You can actually taste the salt in celery. You don't need a packaged salty food or a salt shaker to put on top of your food in order to get your desire for that salty flavor. And that just happens over time. Right. And the other thing I want to mention is, you know, let's talk about eating only when you're hungry. Like right now, I'm feeling hungry in my mouth because I haven't had anything to eat today yet. <laughs> we got to um, get you to the farmer's market soon. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we're getting there. Um, but you want to talk about that and why some of you shouldn't necessarily just eat at specific, specified yeah. times or do you re necessarily recommend that on your program or how do you deal with, you know, because overeating anything, as I've learned by eating over, you know, uh, freeze-dried fruits sure. in excess yeah, yeah, quantity yeah. at the wrong time in the yeah, evening yeah. Uh, has not been actually good for my personal health. Sure. That's a good question. So... I think learning how to truly to sense true hunger yeah. is actually not the easiest thing in the world. <laughs> it's not. It's really, it, it, it took it's me a, many years. Yeah, it, and it's so in our program, it's just, it's not something we really focus on. That's, that's, that's a extra, more way that's extra a, credit, a, like later on. Way later on yeah. for us, um, as long as you're eating green light foods and small amounts of yellow light foods at any time of day, your health is going to improve. Especially yeah, because most people are coming from a place where they were not eating anywhere right. close to that. Yeah. So eating at certain times, eating late at night, if it's the proper category of food, you're gonna be just fine. All right, good deal. All right, cool, I think we're coming to the end of this uh, episode, Robbie, and you know, I hope all, all you guys are still watching <laughs> and uh, are, are benefiting from this, and you know, whether you have diabetes or not, you know, I, would re I do recommend actually a whole food plant-based diet, yeah. you know, uh, in low fat, um, you know, I like to eat it mostly raw uh, with high nutrients, but once again, that's extra credit. Um, but Robbie, I know some people might need hand-holding really to get on your program so that they could really heal themselves and this is the solution to diabetes in my opinion. You know, how can somebody get involved with your coaching program and, and I know you do a lot of education on your own um, to really help people with this challenge in their lives so that they could lead yeah. basically normal lives and even be healthier than even before having diabetes. So you could think of diabetes as, as the best blessing. Like when I got sick and almost lost my life, that's the only reason why I'm sitting here yeah, next to Robbie right. and the only thing, the only reason why I've learned everything about plant-based, whole food, nutrient-dense diets, growing my own food, processing them in the best ways possible to be here. So yeah, think of this as a blessing and, and how can you help somebody you, with their blessing to, to take it to the next level? You are 100% right. I feel the same way about type 1 diabetes. It is a blessing. I have become healthier, happier, of a purpose. You can choose to take your diagnosis. You can, you know, complain about it or you can turn your life around. You've done that. I've done that. We've had thousands of our clients do that. And I hope you watching this video choose to do that as well. And you're exactly right. We all benefit from handholding yeah. in certain areas of life yeah. from certain other experts who have been through something we've been through or worked with other people and gotten the results that you're looking for. And so I worked at Forks Over Eyes for six years, helped sort of build that brand up, had a lot of fun. We did great things. I'm good friends with them and still watching them thrive and just change the world. But the reason I left is because there was not a place for people to go to get the hands-on coaching. We, me and my co-founder Cyrus, we started Mastering Diabetes to fulfill a need that was just not being fulfilled. If you are living with diabetes and you want to follow a low-fat plant-based whole food diet, we have the coaching and the tools to make sure it's the smoothest, most successful transition possible. We have large group coaching that's very affordable. We have small group coaching if you want a little more private attention. And we also offer private coaching for people who want that one-on-one -on -one help. Maybe they have a busy schedule, they don't have time to join the group or learn from the group or want to hear about other people's problems. They just want their questions answered. We offer that. So we have a range of coaching options. You can learn about that on our website. We also we have an online summit it's called the Master Diabetes Summit. You can go on our website, click Summit, and you'll get interviews with 32 of the world's leading experts. It's fascinating to hear how expert after expert after expert saying the same thing and all talking about all these different diseases. Fatty liver, heart disease, kidney disease, really getting into the details on this whole picture here of why insulin sensitivity matters. So that's a big thing that we do. We also do in-person retreats. We have one coming up in Costa Rica, May 16th to the 20th. 
We have five spots left. So I don't know how soon you're going to release this video. <laughs> but, come out before then. <laughs> but if somebody wants to join us there, you can, uh, again, reach us on our website very easy. You can email us anytime, team at masteringdiabetes.org. We're very active on social media, Instagram, Facebook. If you write to us, we will answer. You DM us on Instagram, we're going to get back to you. You write a comment, we try and answer. Uh, if we miss your first comment, ask again or DM us and we'll get back to you. We're active on YouTube. We also answer all the comments on YouTube. We're here to help. So we have a team and um, we just, we, we want, we, we, if you want the help, if you're ready to do this, I'm telling you, all, all we need is the willingness. If you have the willingness and the desire, we will hold your hand every step of the way. We will help you. You just have to communicate with us. We have a free Facebook group. People can go in and ask questions there. And again, the community there is very smart there. They will help you. We have uh, people on our team also checking in there as well. We are accessible, we're reachable. We can answer your questions. We know there's a lot of confusion out there. A lot of people saying the exact opposite of what we're saying, showing good results, and that's confusing. We're here to address that. Make sure you are not confused and know exactly what to eat. We just did a live webinar. We had a thousand people on there. It was really fun. And we asked people, what do you, what do you need help with? And people kept on saying, I don't know what to eat. I don't know what to eat. And we're gonna clarify that. And we give you recipes. We answer that and then we also help you discover how to manage your blood glucose through the process. If you are insulin resistant, when you first start eating these foods, you might see some spikes. You might, depending on how well you execute it. If you add greens and stuff, you can sort of avoid the spikes. But we walk you through that. That's the whole point of the coaching program and we uh, just would love to hear from you. So hope we can help. Wow, so yeah, I mean, if you guys have diabetes, I'd encourage you guys to reach out to Robbie. I mean, it's ama I'm amazed that you could answer all your social media and respond to people. I mean, well, you have a whole yeah, team. Totally. I'm a man of, I'm a team of one yeah. and my video editor uh, that's doing great work. Thank you, Sandra, um, out there. And I, I can't respond to everybody because yeah, sure. it's just me. But yeah. so that's, that's quite admirable that, you know, they're there. If you want help, if you want to take the first step, if you want to literally, you know, heal the challenge that you've been given, the opportunity actually that you've been given um, reach out to yeah. them once again. I'll put their links down below to the different their websites and all the different social medias and all that kind of yeah. stuff. So check Robbie out. I recommend him highly. I've known him for so long. He's do, you're doing excellent work, Robbie. Thanks, Thank you. Appreciate and it. Aside from Tom, you. everybody out there, yeah. you know, and eat more fruits and vegetables. They're, they're definitely the best foods, and you know they are they are green light foods. Yes. Eat as yes. much as, yes. Yes. as you can stuff in, but of course you got to make sure you get your calories too. Otherwise you're gonna go the wrong direction. Right. So uh, uh, Robbie, any final comments or words of wisdom you'd like to share with people that may have uh, diabetes or 100%. anybody else? My final comment is try it. You have yeah. nothing to lose. Yeah. Maybe some excess weight, but <laughs> nothing to lose for trying this. Yeah. I mean, there's so much science. This is Our program is 100% evidence-based. We don't make any recommendations suggesting what people do unless it's backed by research. If we say anything else that, hey, we think this might work, but it's not back of research, we'll tell you that. But the program itself is backed by research and you also just have common sense to back this up. So if you're struggling with diabetes and blood glucose management, insulin resistance, just give this a try. Communicate with us, we'll help you every step of the way. Don't say I tried it and my blood glucose went up and it doesn't work. Don't do that. <laughs> Communicate with us, we will help you every step of the way. Give it a shot, I say 30 days. Give yourself 30 days committed to doing this, focusing on one meal at a time. Try by the end of 30 days to get to the point where you're eating all three meals, low fat, plant-based, whole food, and you will see a transformation, I guarantee it. Yeah, and even if you have diabetes or pre-diabetes, right? Or even if you don't have pre-diabetes or diabetes, this is just a good diet yeah. to be on. Absolutely. It, it, just to be healthy. <laughs> Absolutely. This is the diet that I would recommend, yeah. although I'd yeah. do it a little bit, a little yeah. bit differently sure. if you didn't have any uh, you know, blood sugar issues or diabetes issues. Uh, you know, I'd focus a lot more on the yeah. nutrition, but that's uh, for a different video. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so Robbie, uh, once again, name your uh, websites and how yeah. you can get a hold of you real quick. Masteringdiabetes.org. Go there in the upper right corner. There is a start here button. Enter there. You'll get a PDF explaining a lot of what I talked about today, a lot of the science behind insulin sensitivity. Get registered there. Then you'll get emails about all our programs that we're doing, all the challenges we're doing. And you can also follow us on social media at Mastering Diabetes on Instagram. Same thing on Facebook, Mastering Diabetes on YouTube. And my personal Instagram is Mindful Diabetic Robbie. I also reply to all DMs. Wow. So we are, we're here to help. So reach out to us. I can't wait to see you to try the challenge. Wonderful. Well, Robbie, I want to thank you for being on and sharing with all, all this with my viewers and, and new viewers that, uh, uh, you know, that have found me because of this video. So I thank you. And once again, I, I encourage you guys, if you guys have prediabetes, diabetes, type one or type two, 
check out Robbie. You know, you can get started for free. You know, nothing, to, no cost. And even if you just want to be a lurker and learn from him and do what he's doing, you know, that could be great. But hey, the hand holding is essential in this day and age. And one day, I hope to have a team to to help hand hold people and teach them how to guard and teach them to how to do everything I do <laughs> personally. But until then, um, you got Robbie. Um, so yeah, check out once again. Link is down below the video. So. Anyways, if you guys like this video um, with Robbie, want more videos with Robbie, because you know, I come to LA once in a while and I could always try to hook Absolutely. up and make more videos because this guy is a wealth of knowledge, especially when it has to come. I mean, he's the he's my diabetes <laughs> expert. I mean, I'm not ever going to have that, but if I did or if I had friends, you know, I definitely would, would uh, you know, uh, refer them to, uh, to, to Robbie there. So yeah, uh, thumb this up if you guys liked it. Yeah. Also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down, yeah. down below so you don't miss out on my new and upcoming episodes of coming out every five to seven days. You never know what new topic, what new health challenge that I'll be covering on my videos that a whole food, plant-based, fruit and vegetable dominated diet uh, can help you with. And make sure you click the little bell so you guys get notified. Uh, be sure to share this video if you, you have and you're in a diabetes support group. Send this video in an email route to people. Share it on Facebook so that more people can become aware of you know, Robbie's work, what he's doing, and how he can help so many people out there, literally, if they just want to get started. And uh, finally, be sure to check my past episodes, my past episodes, over 500 episodes at this time on this YouTube channel, dedicated to teach you guys about the healthiest foods on the planet, in my opinion, are the fresh fruits and the fresh vegetables, and how you can include more of them, how they can help you and help your body heal, and, and how you could just be healthier because of them, all right? And so uh, with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're always the best.